Welcome back to the devlog. We are going to look at a particular quirk in Unity. Shader graphs don't work in the UI in Unity. And let's look at what we can do about it. Uh, there's a little bit of a workaround that I've come up with to get you past that. So, okay, let's start with, let's just get some UI going. Uh, let's have like, a, let's get it like a green button and I'll put my little time crystal on it, let's say. And we'll make these sprites apply. Okay, let's make a UI for that. We're gonna, we're gonna say, uh, let's just make an image and this will be the background, say. And we'll put the green button on that. And let's create on top of that another image, crystal. And we'll put that on there. And let's make the button bigger. 200 by 200. All right, cool. Great. So we've got ourselves a little UI thing. Um, everything's good. We are in screen space overlay. When you research this particular problem, you're going to find a lot of people saying that it's the screen space overlay doesn't work. You have to put in, use some other rendering mode, but we don't want to do that. So we're going to find another workaround. I'll just put it in scale mode. All right, cool. So uh, the, original, the original problem that I ran into was the statement that, oh, we can't get transparency to work or transparency is not supported in the UI and I'm like what are you talking about of course transparency transparency is totally supported in the UI as you can see there um, so that's not the issue the issue seems to be that shader graphs are not supported in the UI so let's show what I mean here I'm gonna also throw uh, just a crystal, time crystal sprite on the screen. Okay, um, now let's make a custom material. We'll call this, I don't know, um, alpha material. And we will make a shader graph. I have imported shader graph already. I'm going to use a built-in unlit shader graph. Okay, and I'm just going to call this alpha also. All right. Um, yep, let's start editing the shader graph. What do I want? I'm going to want to put a texture on it. And we'll sample, sample that texture. And we'll just put our texture on there. Need a little more space to work here. Put our texture on there. We'll use UV0. We're happy with that. Uh, and then that will go to the base color. Uh, we want a semi. Well, you know what? Let's start with that. Let's put this on here. And let's go back to the game. And we will put the alpha shader onto the alpha material, put the alpha material onto our little time crystal. And yeah, that's not right. Uh, let's get the alpha supported on there. Okay. Uh, all right. Graph settings. We want unlit, transparent, render mode, alpha. Let's save that. That didn't work. Oh. The alpha channel needs to be filled in. Here we go. There you go. I am just using the textures alpha channel on there. And now, bang, look at that. The sprite is supporting the alpha channel. Um, I have not yet supported the sprite color. The color doesn't do anything. Um, I, could, I could fix that. Let's go ahead and fix that while we're in here. So for sprites, Sprite color comes in via the vertex color node. And let's just do a multiply of the vertex color and this thing here. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, we'll do a multiply. 
multiply and we're going to multiply the vertex color and the text color and I want that to include the alpha let me make that small okay and I want to split split Boop. The alpha there. Okay. Save. Shrink that. Make that a little prettier. Save. Okay. Uh, and now I have my color modifier and I have it concluding the alpha channel. Okay, real quick, how'd I make that work? This is the basics of how to get a sprite, a simple sprite renderer shader graph. This is the starting point for a, a sprite renderer. I need my main text, called main text, to come in here, and I will make a, a sample texture 2D node to pull that out, and UV0 is the default. I will also need a vertex color node multiply those together and that output that four channel output is the full texture that you want to feed into your your um, material for your sprite the rgb goes to the base color and the alpha which i need a splitter node to get the alpha goes into the fragment alpha i got a fragment alpha by selecting uh, here we go on the graph settings in the graph inspector selecting transparent mode and let's say we want alpha blending uh, everything else should be fine yeah the rest, I'm sure that's fine okay so we've got a working sprite now this is a working sprite using that material with our color <laughs> complete with the alpha channel we can fade out our sprite great how about this one now let's put that same material on here and bang it it doesn't work it doesn't work at all it just comes through as black the core of the problem here seems to be that the output of the shader graph is not compatible with the UI and uh, I will I will look up the actual bug here this is a known bug in unity and it is currently marked as I understand it as will not fix uh, or by design so maybe you guys can get on there and, and vote it up if you want to see this fixed what can we do uh, it turns out that it's just shader graph. Shader graph doesn't, is not supported in the UI, but regular shaders, HLSL shaders, totally fine. If you're already familiar with writing HLSL shaders, this should be no problem. Just hit the HLSL shader, write up everything you want, boom, Bob's your uncle, uh, and it'll work fine. If you're of the of the variety that shader graph is your way of understanding shaders what can you do the workaround i have come up with is that i could take this shader graph and export it to a regular shader and make a few tweaks to it so that we can uh we can get the results that we want a little tedious but that's a way to work so here's what we'll do we'll come here and we will view generated shader. All right, this is the shader that is being applied there. And so the first thing I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a regular shader, not a shader graph, a regular unlit shader. I will call this um, transparent UI. Okay, this is the basics. I'm just going to take this whole shader and paste it 
over the old one. Okay, now I've just taken and just copied the generated shader onto my transparent UI shader that I just made. And let's apply that to our material and go back to the scene. And we'll see that the time crystal, which is using the alpha shader and the alpha shader is using transparent UI, still works. Um, let's verify that the alpha works. Yeah. So we have successfully copied over the shader, but guess what? It still doesn't work in the UI. Now we can fix it. We can fix it in the text of the shader. We don't need that one anymore. If we look at this shader now, um, what we're going to find is that there are several passes. This first pass is called light mode forward base. The second pass is a shadow caster. We don't need a shadow caster. Um, and a scene selection pass and a scene picking pass. And we don't need any of those, right? We only want this first pass. So what I'm going to do is just delete the rest of them. I'll pop down here to the end, boom. Delete all the, delete all the passes except the first one. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna take this tag out. This is just the pass. Uh, let's see if that's good enough. There you go. And now it works. Um, and so that's how simple the fix would be if Unity wants to go ahead and fix it. Let's, let's demonstrate also that our UI thing is now fully supported with semi-transparent alpha. So there you go. That's how you can take a shader graph that you made and make it compatible with the UI. Let me run, run you down the procedures again. You create your shader graph and get it working, not in the UI, get it working as a sprite. And then you save it, right? You save your asset. You come out here to when you select your shader graph, there's an option here in the inspector to view the generated shader. You copy that into a new shader, which is just a regular shader, not a shader graph. Make a regular shader. Open that one in your editor, just copy the entirety of your generated shader over to this new one, give it a different name uh, so they don't conflict with each other. And then go to the passes and go delete all the passes except just the first one. And the pass has a custom tag in it. You can just delete that custom tag. It's about lighting. Um, and Bob's your uncle, that shader now should work. Um, at least it, it has for me so far. Now, what do you do when you want to change your shader graph? You want to edit your shader graph and have that reflected in the UI. And as we know, that's not gonna work. So we'll need a sprite version of the graphic for testing purposes. We'll put the shader graph back on the material and then that'll not work in the UI, but it will work as a sprite. And we'll come over here and let's do something like let's, um, I don't know, let's like invert the colors. Let's do invert colors. Okay. I'm going to take the input color and just invert it. And let's do red, green, blue. Um, and I'll make it pretty. These nodes are too big. Okay, um, cool, and we'll save that asset. We'll pop back over to the game, and you can see I have inverted the color. So now I wanna update that so that my custom shader has that again. I'm just gonna come over here, just regenerate the shader, view the generated shader. It should now have that code. So I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna come up here, just grab the whole thing. I want to keep the name. I'm going to keep the name of my new shader so that I don't they don't conflict. And there you go. So I copied the whole body of the shader, just removed the name, and we'll do the same thing we did before. Just remove the tags and remove all the passes except 
the first pass, save, and put that on. Okay, uh, there you go. And so that's how you would iterate on this. It's a little bit tedious, um, but it gets the job done. Yeah, down in the description there, I'm going to put a link to the Unity issue where Unity has said this is by design um, and see if we can maybe upvote it to get them to just add a little button that lets us do that. Uh, it's, it's not exactly complicated, but um, I think people uh, just haven't expressed enough that they are doing custom shaders in the UI. Apparently that's not a thing that a lot of us do. Okay, um, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope that helps, um, particularly for the for the team here at school that's run into this problem. Hopefully that's a, a workable solution. Catch you next time.